Mass on my Watts here, and we are going to be doing a deck tech on the deck we're going to be playing tonight, this morning, whatever time that happens to happen in your local neck of the woods, for Legacy Tribal Apocalypse. And um, we are playing a Humans Recurring Nightmare deck. Now, we're using the Humans as the value creatures that make up the stock of the deck, but the main thrust of the deck is actually the interaction between Recurring Nightmare and Yosai the Morning Star. Um, I'm going to actually start off talking about that. Like, If you don't know what Recurring Nightmare does, um, it's 2 and a black, sacrifice a creature, and you get a creature back from your graveyard to to the battlefield. And then you can, but you can only use it as a sorcery and it returns it to its hand. So basically for 2 and a black, buy back 0 as a sorcery. You switch a creature from play in, in the graveyard. You interact that with Yosai, either cycling two Yosais, or if you have 6 mana, uh, cycling a Yosai and another creature, and then the creature and back for Yosai. And uh, what that triggers his die effect. The main goal is you want to make sure Yosai is dying every turn. Uh, and it, target player skips his next untap step, and they tap five lands. Five, you can tap five permanents they control. So you can lock them into a uh, stasis lock. Well, that doesn't affect you, and eventually just you know get to the position where you're beating them down with a giant 5-5 five, five flying dragon while they don't have anything untapped, or potentially just killing them with like your various grizzly bears that are you know switching out for the dragon. All right. Now, as our human package, um, I'll, for, I'll start off right off the bat. Uh, Avacyn's Pilgrim, if you have them, Noble Hierarch's just better. Like, there's no reason to play Avacyn's Pilgrim unless you just don't have Noble Hierarch, and I don't have Noble Hierarch. But it's a human mana dude that helps ramp us up. This Beck is really looking to cast... Uh, like this deck's game plan kind of starts at four, at the three to four mana, and it really wants to be at about like five or six to actually end the game. So we need mana dudes. Um, Harris Band Druid, I'm. This guy's either going to be really really good in the deck or really really bad. Like he's a zero one for two, so he's super vulnerable. He's not exactly the ideal turn two play, but he does produce any color mana you want. So, there's that. And theoretically, if you get two of them in play, um, they become really powerful. So, I mean, because they produce equal to the number of allies you control. Now, it's possible there may have been, like, I could have done a more ally-focused version of Recurring Nightmare. And I know there's a wolf, a guy that makes wolves that is an ally, but I think it's an elf. But theoretically, if you, you could do an ally Recurring Nightmare deck, and that would probably also work pretty well. But that would probably have more of a. It'd be more like that would probably be more like a beatdown deck that has recurring nightmare as like a backup plan. All right, now we get into our value creatures. Uh, we have War Priest of Thune, uh, important because it is a Yume. So we never have to worry about him hitting one of our own enchantments. Though we don't play that many, we only play like five cards in our enchantments, and it, he's never going like we recurring nightmare is never going to be targeted. Like you, ne you should never, because of the way the stack works, you cast Recurring Nightmare, once it's resolved, you have priority, and the first thing you should do is activate Recurring Nightmare, and as part of its cost, it goes back to your hand. It's never, your opponent is never able to target it unless you have an effect that is triggered by an enchantment coming into play that then your opponent can respond and hit your Recurring Nightmare. Which is one of the reasons why we're not playing any enchantresses or anything like that, because it opens up Recurring Nightmare to being uh, removed. We're also playing Borderland Ranger as uh, kind of card advantage and extra fixing. Uh, we're playing Eternal Witness also as kind of card advantage and just value to get back things to try and get us into our uh, our late game. Because uh, uh, obviously there are going to be times when we can't quite bury it alive and just put three Yosai's in. Like if we can bury it alive, we might be under a lot of pressure and really need to next turn bring out a faithful... So, um, but we have the Sin Collectors as a way to proactively interact with our opponent. Um, it enables us to kind of, you know, we, we get to look in their hand and take one of their uh, instants or sorceries and exile it. So that enables us to make sure we can get things like Paths to Exiles, Swords to Plowshares, um, counter spells, things that are going to, that really interrupt our plan. Uh, Sin Collector helps us proactively uh, combat that. Taros Faithful is 
the worst. Like the, this is the creature that is in here as human, nineteen and eight, uh, nineteen and twenty. Um, objectively, I would play a, a obstinate Bailoff over this if this wasn't uh, a humans deck, and it's or just more Kitchen Finks or Thrag Tusk or a bunch of other creatures that aren't four mana one fours. That all they do is gain life, but against an aggressive strategy, um, a one four wall that gains you four life can sometimes be all you need to give to give you those extra uh, two turns to get them locked down. One other important thing to remember with the Yosai combo, um, you are vulnerable to being bolted out. Like theoretically, your opponent can. Like, unless you're cycling Yosai and, like, Sin Collector or Faithful, your opponent can draw one mana, burn spells, save them, eventually draw mountains, and bolt you. The odds are going to be able to do that quickly enough are very low, but it is something to consider when you're getting your Buried Alive package. Like, my typical Buried Alive package is probably not going to be just three Yosais. Because there's... In, unless my opponent... I think my opponent has something that can remove one creature from the graveyard or two, there's no reason. Um... In fact, all you're doing is exposing an extra yo size to uh, a potential graveyard sweep. I'd probably get, depending on what my opponent's playing, either like Yosai, Faithful, and maybe a Kitchen Finks or a Necrotal. And then if they're playing more of a control, you get the Sit and Collector. And the reason is that you can cycle through and you're just picking out cards out of their hand every turn as you're, as you're beating them down. So even so you take all their one mana answers, so even if they draw the land, then it's just dead in their hand. And, okay, so um, we are running 23, or 22 lands. I thought it was actually running 23. We're running 22 lands, but one of them I consider a spell. Uh, Yahoo My Hollow. I mean, it's legendary. We're only running one of it. Uh, so there's no drawback there. It does only add colorless, which is sort of the, the downside. Um, and it lets us regenerate a creature, which, against decks that aren't playing a lot of tramplers, uh, can sometimes, basically this can just be Maze of Eth, that produces colorless mana. You know, I mean, we chump block with an Avacyn Pilgrim and just regenerate it. Right, uh, Wall of Omens is one of the best early game, just brick walls. It uh, very few creatures. It is really hard for your opponent to profitably attack through it. Like they have to have a four power creature, and even then, you still gained four life and drew a card from them hitting it, from playing it. Um, more often than not, it's going to eat a lightning bolt, draw you a card, and block a creature. And that's just it. it buys you so much momentum. Uh, Far seeks is this deck doesn't really begin to start... Like, it really wants to get to three to four mana to start establishing control. And Farseek helps you get there faster. Uh, Sylvan Library, um, we are playing a somewhat combo deck. We're also playing a deck where some of our cards aren't always going to be good. Like, sometimes we're just going to have dead cards. And Sylvan Library helps us filter without, you know, to not draw them. Um, and since we have Farseek's and Borderland Rangers and Buried Alives, there is the potential that we, you know, we can reach the point where we're like, eh, I don't want that, I don't want that. And once we have the two cards we don't want, um, we can just recur a nightmare, or we're gonna play one of our shuffle effects and reset the library so we get to see three new cards next turn. And the Kitchen Finks is just the ultimate value creature for a recurring nightmare. Um, it has Persist, so... Like, theoretically, against, like, an aggressive red deck, you don't even really have to get, like, the optimal package against, like, a, an aggro red for Buried Alive would be Kitchen Finks, Faithful, Yosai, you untap, you play the Finks. You, if you have a recurring Nightmare, you sacrifice, the, you, you, you block, it die, it goes down to being a 2-1. You trade the Finks for the Taros Faithful. You've gained, like, 8 life, and... Then you, or you might even just trade it for the uh, Yosai if you're not in that much threat. threat. The Yosai blocks. You then trade the Yosai for the Finks, and then you swap the Finks for like, and the Sphinx, Finks comes back, so you can get the Faithful with it, and you just then you start getting ahead on creatures. 
like Kitchen Finx enables us to basically get every creature we've seen eventually back onto the battlefield without because it's just going to be plus card advantage with our current nightmare. It's super powerful. And so our mana base, um, thanks to Vintage Masters, we have some dual lands. Uh, we're playing two scrubs, four savannas, four overgrown tombs, three temple gardens. It was originally going to be four temple gardens, but I went up to four savannas instead. Um, we're, I don't have any bayou, so we're playing Woodlot Cemetery. I don't mind, um, since we only have two lands in the entire deck that cause us to come into, that we, you know, that if they're in play, it causes us to come into play on tap. I'm not that worried about it. And then, you know, two forests, two swamps, one plains. And the reason we're playing five basics is because uh, Borderland Ranger helps us uh, get, well, excuse me, helps us get basics. Like, I wish it was just get a forest, but it's not. It's get a basic. 